wanted a um, strong D. I'm off the coffee. Thank you. That's terrific. First letter tonight. I always believed intelligence to some degree is inherited, but my second daughter bucks the trend. The dad writes in. Second letter tonight. I'm not quite sure we Aussies are in control of our political system. Time to review everything that happens coming off the heels of our election. And the last letter tonight. Neither one of us wants to live with the other, but we are talking marriage. All this and more coming up in about 10 seconds. We'll sweet and sound. Don't go away. See you soon. Got a problem, big or small, would a miracle be nice? Our monthly crew is back, churning out advice. You might even laugh a bit in the following half hour. Park your backside on the couch, cause baby, it's time for Sweet and Sour. Right here on Sweet and Sour. Pour some sugar on there, baby. It's time for Sweet and Sour. How's it about some chili? It's time for Sweet and Sour. Good evening, everyone. Lovely to have you company. Welcome to Sweet and Sour. Who are the guests tonight? First up, Johnny Love, back hey, from Rich. Sardinia. Hello, yes. mate. Nice to be back. Is Thanks. it really? It is. is it well, really? It is when you get to go on the show. Oh, okay. Well, that softens the blow a little Although bit. Although we could have done it from over there. <laughs> yes, via, via sweet and sour in, Sa in Sardinia. In Sardinia. Yeah. How's That's the lovely Eddie this week? She's fabulous. Settled back? Yes, she's coming to be an audience member, if you can hear the clapping. <laughs> Hello, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Great to have you both Thank here. you. Nice to be back. Good on you, Johnny. Hello, Barb. Hello. Lovely to have you. And you've got some news for us again. Thanks. What are you doing? Pink Ribbon Ball 2010. 2010. When is it? 9th of October. 9th of October. Amazing Ball. Amazing Ball. And that's why we're all in pink tonight? Yes. Think pink. It's spring, think, think pink. Think pink. Yes. Think pink. All right. We'll think pink. We'll talk a little bit more about Thanks. it a little later. Hello, Perry. Gary. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having You're me. You're thinking pink already. Pink, yes. I'm on top of it. Not your natural colour. Oh, but you did tell me you were descended from the Vikings. I am red-headed red -headed Vikings. Or are you just trying to reinforce the natural... Just getting DNA's? back in touch with my roots. Okay. Good to have you here. <laughs> Councillor James, welcome for the first time as well. Gary, how are you? Terrific, mate. Nice to have you here. Great to be here. What news in the City of Perth? This Fashion Week this week. Fashion Week. And our Lord Mayor's the Ambassador, Lisa. Terrific. She uh, scrubs up pretty well then? She does. <laughs> she does. I know she Very does. Very talented I've seen her out and about. She's terrific. All right, mate. Good to have you here. Had a look at the letters? Yes. In a word? Interesting. Interesting. All right. First one. Interesting. Dear sweet and sour guests, I always believed intelligence to some degree is inherited. That is, smart parents make smart kids. I'm sure a lot of environmental factors come into play as well, as it stands to reason. Clever parents will expose their children to a range of interests and stimuli that will promote deeper thinking and better developed cognitive skills. Thank you for the thesis, by the way. This is terrific. Both my wife and I have tertiary degrees. I have an MBA and my wife has a PhD in chemistry. And two of our children follow that pattern. My middle daughter, however, bucks the trend. Not only is she not interested in any progressive thinking, she's entirely self-absorbed and totally annoying. She's one of those young and pretty 22-year-old girls who talks incessantly about herself and things and herself and clothes and herself and boyfriends and herself and herself and herself. I love her immensely and occasionally have a giggle about her, but she is just nothing like the rest of our family. I'm sure she's capable of greater thinking, but I'm... But here I am at my wit's end trying to foster some glimmer of intellectual thought in her and find myself writing to your panel for advice. Frankly, I don't believe I'm doing this. What do we do here to turn this 22-year-old into one of life's contributors rather than someone who has others rolling their eyes every time she opens her mouth? It comes to us from Anthony of La Perouse in New South Wales and we're going straight to Johnny. Well, Mitch, like he said, frankly, he can't believe he's doing this. We can't, well, I can't believe he's asking us. It seems quite obvious to me that your daughter is rebelling. And you obviously might be a very intelligent man, but are you a good parent? There are parent books you could read and find out about what's really going on because the poor girl is just screaming out for attention and love and she probably doesn't want to do the chemistry because she's been told to do it. He's already got two girls or two kids that are well, I take it top of the class and excelling, and he's got one who's not interested. What is wrong with that? Middle child syndrome. Middle she might child, be artistic. Ah, middle child syndrome. Well, yeah, we could she might be artistic. 
No, yeah, artistic. What? She might not no, want to do the math science doesn't and mean stuff you, and the physics. Doesn't mean you're dumb. Doesn't mean right. Artistic doesn't mean you're annoying. No, of course. Well, <laughs> she's, <laughs> but she's he, he just doesn't understand his kids. Exactly. And she's saying, she's talking about herself because she has a lack of confidence. She's getting pressure from her peers, from her parents, her brothers, society. I say, here's one for the girl. Yeah. Get and, off her back. And, and maybe she's the only one in the family who's actually chatty. The rest Maybe. might all be Maybe they're all boring. And boring. Barbara, what's your take on this one? Well, you, you said it all what I was thinking, so I just summarise and add <laughs> Just tell things. her to go to the pink ribbon ball yes. on the start of the night. Just to cover it. And the... she'll have it all sorted. All right. What I think, there's no recipe of, of having or bringing or creating good children. It doesn't work this way. Because no if recipes. it was, no recipes. Otherwise, somebody would write a book, the beautiful people will have beautiful children, and the clever people will have clever children. But it doesn't happen. It doesn't work this way. This bestseller hasn't happened yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, she talks about clothes herself, rolls her eyes. At least she talks at least she talks you know the Y generation doesn't talk That's sometimes true. why is Y generation Y I have a question why because is Y generation Y why is it, it called y? Ge generation X Aha. That's the easy answer. Okay. The Y generation is called take generation lately because just take, take, not give. Big time. Okay. You've noticed. Yes. Big, big, well, big, big, big. Hey, where, does, where does that somebody stop? Somebody whispered to me. Stop? Who, who's in the um, Y generation at the moment? From what age to what age? If you're what? Up to that up to about 30 and well, down to 24 25 oh no, be earlier, than earlier. That. earlier earlier i think it's yeah. earlier, uh, earlier? Early so it encompasses this 22 year old there girl we are. yes yeah. definitely okay. so this gentleman sorry i have to roll my eyes how did he imagine it w just you know everybody has to be the same no. yeah true huh? why do you want everybody right, the same anybody james what's your take on this one i reckon this guy is self-absorbed who really cares what degrees he's got what degree his wife's got <laughs> Uh, it really comes down as to what sort of person are you? Are you a decent person? And if he did his so-called MBA, he should know about emotional intelligence. Oh, and he obviously you've done your MBA, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> and let me tell you, it's no big deal. <laughs> there is no big deal about doing any tertiary education. It's about who you are, having some emotional intelligence, being a good person, and really listening to your child. Uh, mate, just a little bit of knowledge in my head. You're an MBA and your wife is a PhD. That's correct. So you're but very we don't well do any of this. <laughs> yeah. Well, this we don't have any of these issues. We don't need these titles to make us feel good about ourselves. We just pray to God every day that our little boy continues to grow up healthily or hel healthy, sorry, healthy and is a fantastic person, the best he can be for who he is. And that's how he should be. What a nice dad you for are. His, uh, for his daughter. That's nice. Give no, us no, the no. final word on this, Perry. Well, I'm, I'm a supporter of those who choose to buck the trend, and I think he should be proud of her for doing that. Um, she doesn't a, have any issues. He's a lucky dad to have a child who's, you know, different to everyone. Because if everyone uh, looks the same, then we get tired of looking at each other, I believe someone big said. Time. Big time. And yeah. Give her time anyway. She's 22. She's not interested. Yeah, in the give that her you're time in. to grow and do all those things. She's still young. She's having fun. Okay, off the top of your head, how old are you? I'm not allowed Mid. to say. No, okay. 23. 23. <laughs> <laughs> Gave me a hard time. <laughs> Told everybody. What's that about? Okay, some of your interests. Oh, going to picture theatre and dressmaking and baking and. Do you really? Yeah. You didn't bring us anything tonight. Mm -hmm. Short notice. <laughs> all right, next, next time, all right? Short notice, all right. Well, there you go, Anthony of uh, La Paris, New South Wales. We all think you're a prick. That's another issue. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the wash-up of the election that we've just had. Don't go away. Sweet and sour. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Terrific. Welcome back to Sweet and Sour. Desmond Decker did the original. I remember that one. Thank you, Wayne. Terrific. The Israelites. Oh, yeah, I remember. If you would like to send us a letter, send it to the address that's appearing on your screen right now, which is, if I get, if I get it right, letters at sweetandsour.net.au. They'll land here. And for every letter that we do read out, we are going to send you to the movies, courtesy of the very gorgeous Natalie Cameron and NRC Communications. And in November, Natalie's going to come on the show and do her little Bart Simpson impersonation as well. Uh, the movie we're sending you to this week is 
The Kids Are All Right, starring Mark Ruffalo and Julianne Moore and... Nia Oh, you're very good. And who? Anne Banning. You're very good. Have you guys seen it? No, but we know who is in it. <laughs> They're very good. And if you're not doing anything on the 9th of October, my suggestion is The Pink Ribbon Ball. Starring Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> 9th of October, Pink Ribbon Ball to be held at the Perth Convention Exhibition Centre. Yes, tickets available at Ticketek. And MomentumWF.com.au Momentum WF 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 Of course. Dot com. Dot au. Dot au. Hello Mitch and panellists. What an election we've had. I'm delighted that what was initially the most boring campaign in Australian political history turned into the most exciting period of wait and see outcomes I've ever known. Better still? Now we're living in an ongoing period of political tension that, have that has aroused an interest in our national politics I've never seen before. We really do need to look at the whole system, though, in all of this, as I'm not quite sure we Aussies are actually in control of our political system. First, we have a Prime Minister who is removed without the people being consulted. Then we have an election with neither of the two leaders of the, ma of the major parties offering any inspirational policies or progressive avenues, hence the national yawn and high informal vote. And finally, we have independents who certainly don't have any majority mandate determining government. Where to from here? Surely this is the opportunity for a complete overhaul now that everyone is paying attention. And surely this should be via a constitutional convention of the people. We certainly can't call Julia Gillard the first elected female Prime Minister of Australia as her government has been cobbled together by independents, Greens and others. And how long can this period of a government held together with nothing more than spit truly last? Time to review the entire system while the nation's attention is focused. It comes to us from Charles of Rosewater in South Australia who obviously didn't get his candidate or choice of government up, otherwise he wouldn't be writing to it. Ju is that a fair thing to say? Julia Gillard's not the first elected Prime Minister? She's been elected like every other... I think technically she is. You can't deny that technically she technically is the she Prime is. Minister. She if got she's there not, eventually. no other Prime Minister has. Yeah. She's PM. He's talking about mandates, I think. That's a horrible word. Anyway, what do you say to... Jo How engaged are you at the moment with what's going on? Well, I can because it's a fairly boring election. Sort of... I didn't get into it too much, however... The outcome? Sort of, I sort of didn't get onto it until quite late in the piece and by the time all Sorry the Charles, the young people are not engaged yet, well, maybe you are. not necessarily. As a, a you know, keen Gen Y and user of Facebook, the place was on fire. A lot of my friends were very, you know, pro-liberal or pro-labour and, you know, very pushy about their opinions and, I mean, while I might not be extremely excited about it all, I think a lot of young people are and... That's not a bad thing. No, not a bad thing. We <laughs> had the youngest ever Member of Parliament elected as well oh. in Queensland. He's 20 years of age. Good luck. Ah. Yeah, I think good luck to him too. That's good. He's not going to be able to um, offer a lot of wisdom, but given that he's not going to be a, a minister or anything, he's, got, he's going to certainly I think he's learn a few things yeah, and probably keen to be, learn. be and a, that's important. quite a good contributor. Mm. He comes without baggage, which is fantastic. <laughs> he will write his biography in a year's time. He'll write his biography <laughs> in a year. Yeah, he will. James, <laughs> your take of the landscape at the moment. Gary, I totally agree with the gentleman's comment about um, the former PM Rudd being ousted without people being consulted. I, I think that was poor form, quite frankly. It's, it's probably something that we would have expected from a country that wasn't so-called developed like our wonderful Australia. So if we heard it from another country, we'd go, well, that's what it's like a over there. A very sophisticated coup that we had, yeah. I, uh, military uh, version. Look, I didn't feel comfortable about it, and a lot of people didn't, hence the result that happened. But look, in today's day and age, most politicians, in my opinion, are just like a shiver looking for a spine to go up. <laughs> okay. They gotta have a lot more guts and they gotta stop listening to the spin doctors in the back rooms and they gotta make decisions for the people. They gotta work for the people and not for the spin doctors and not for the political jargon and the crap that goes on. A lot of machines out there it, prompting politicians to yeah, do things. Yeah. How do you fight a machine though? Well, I think the best politicians are the ones that stand up and be counted and you're working for the people. 
not the machine. So you've got to stand up there and you've got to do what's right for the people. That's the bottom line. Barbara, what's right for the people? What they want, what they choose. Okay, so we... Have, they, have they made a clear decision in all of this? No, it's not clear, but it's a decision. We've got the Prime Minister. Let's get on with it. Let's see what she can do. We're going to call Red Hair Day. <laughs> Red Hair Day, terrific. And honestly, I think the you attention span on politics of the Australian you know, population is notoriously small. So I have to disagree with Charles. Sorry, Charles. But I don't think that uh, the timing is right. I think people are actually tired of how long it took. And they want to move on. They, by all means, don't want to review it and change it. They want to see what's going to happen in the near future. That's what I think. Johnny, are you engaged? Uh, in this? Yes, in I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very engaged. You see the look on his face? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think the, um, the most important thing you said was the fact that where do we go from here because there was a high informal vote. Mm. That's where we need to review. Mm. The system's right, it works, it's democratic, you, do, you don't, inv it's not like the presidential system. You're, you're voting for a party, not a person. So um, the fact that uh, we talk about the Prime Minister, this and the Prime Minister, that is not really that important. It's more about the party and what the party do. Mm -hmm. And that's how our system works. That's and, right. And we don't we, have direct elections. Exactly. We wouldn't have this problem if the, the public were educated about how to vote correctly in so, the first place. Um, so it's probably a good thing. They've sat up and taken notice. Still felt a bit dirty. Yeah. was dirty. It was dirty. When we <laughs> come back... Having dispensed with Charles of Rosewater in South Australia, we're going to be talking about whether it's a good idea to move in and whether it's a good thing for a relationship or not. Don't go away. More of Sweet and Sound when we come back. The oldest trick in the book. Terrific. We just found out what the oldest trick in the book is. We're not going to tell you. You have to tell us. We want you to write in and tell us. We've got to go straight on with the next letter. Dear Sweet and Sour, I think this is an odd situation. My boyfriend of seven years lives in the next suburb. We've lived together for three years, but moved apart more than three years ago when he purchased his own home. We had planned to move back in with one another, but found that our relationship became stronger living apart. Now, after all this time, I have pressures from my family and friends that it's time to move the relationship along and either get married or move back in together. Neither one of us is opposed to getting married. We don't need to, but we don't have any stro strong objections to it. I love him plenty and he me, but I don't want to live with him. We, sp we spend some nights at one another's home and sleep over regularly. We holiday together, visit friends and family together and are planning a family together eventually. But in all of this, Neither of us wants to live permanently with the other. I run my own business from home, and should I fall pregnant and have a baby, I'll employ a full-time nanny, so that's not an issue either. The external pressures, however, make me feel uneasy. My parents are traditionally minded, as are his, and I'm quite amazed that our friends can't quite pigeonhole us with any degree of comfort. So what is wrong with living apart? We're both financial enough to do so. Is moving in with one another the natural progression that we shouldn't fight? Why can't we stay as we are and progress our relationship? And it comes to us from Brenda of Mount Waverley in Victoria. Barbara, well, they're not a conventional couple. No. But are they doing anything wrong? Not at all, as long as it suits them. OK, let me tell you a story, a very quick one. There was a German baron in late 18th century in the Western Africa, in Namibia, in a city called Windhoek. There were two mountains, it's a true story. He, made, he built a castle for himself, and the facing mountain had a castle for his mistress. They were a mountain apart with castles on top of each other. When he wanted to Good have romance, he was sending his servant with a calling card, asking if it suits her. She lived until she was 102, he lived until he was 92. And it worked fantastically. <laughs> Doesn't work for the bloke. He, he conked out 10 years earlier. She lived so, till 102. Brenda, Brenda I and Vic, that often. I think this couple, I mean the young people, they know what's, what's, what works for them. But what do you do with the family who are pressuring you? You just listen to family's recipe for disaster. Most families would say, don't move in. Move in after you got married. Mm. Okay, that's the old school, I assume. Huh? Here they say, move in. 
move in, don't move in, do what works for you. Do what yeah, and do whatever works. And listening to the family is recipe for disaster. Johnny? Well, I think that um, it sounds like they've got the seven year itch. Ah, oh, you've it's done the maths, have you? Yeah. My boyfriend really? of seven years. Yeah, oh, it, yeah. it could oh, be. It could be, but it sounds like she's talking through him like, I think it's a good idea. But really what she's saying is my boyfriend said this is how it has to be. Uh. <laughs> you live there, honey. I live here. Boys, let's have a, you know, have the, he can have his oh, cake and eat it boys. too. Exactly. Bring yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I would do this with my wife to be if we had houses next to each other or across the road or something, or even next to each other where you had a little walkway. I'd like to do that. You would do it, so it's yeah, a good idea, it. but close. Good idea, but I Perhaps think he's on the road. And the calling card. So if you have yeah. a blue, you can say, buggy you, I'm going yeah. across and the road. And you can be romantic it. and say, would you like to come to my place for dinner? And, you know. Calling Ooh. card. Yeah. yeah. He's only in the next, this one's only in the next suburb. All right. Tell me, perspective. Well, I think everyone sort of overlooked the fact that they are planning a family <laughs> together. And I think they need to think about what the best for their child would be if they were to have a family together. I mean, obviously there are a lot of broken families out there, but they sort of <coughs> don't start that way. They, you know, start with the intention of being together and having a home together. And I think if you're having a child together, then you need to think about, you know, having a home and building a home together with mum and dad who can be together, look after the little baby. But how often people move together and then it doesn't work and the boom. And as long as they didn't live together, it worked. Well, I agree that every relationship is different, but at the end of the line, you need to think about, you know, what's going to be best for, you know, having a, a child and, and bringing that up in the right sort of environment. Obvious, okay. obviously, so it depends on the kids. What happens if together they're just a, a volcano? Well, but apart, whether they're next door or next suburb, they're great people and good for their kids. Every relationship's different. It's not what I would do, but if it's working for them, Go on. James, what's <laughs> really going on here, mate? Look, I, the fact that he moved out, in my opinion, was an obvious sign of the strength of commitment. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I, um, good luck to him. <laughs> good luck to him. If she wants to believe that he is committed and that he really wants to be with her, but he's just moved out for a bit, good luck to him. I think he's just looking for the better alternative. He's on a winner. And let me tell you, as soon as it comes, bye bye Brenda. Brenda, mm, you're playing with fire, James reckons. All right, James, we've got to give away a pair of limited edition Sunnies courtesy of Aussie Opticals and Alan Treves. Which of tonight's letters do you like to give away the pair of limited Sunnies? Well, look, I might have disappointed Brenda, but I think uh, her letter wins it. <laughs> her letter, the final letter. Panel? Concur yes, or disagree? I agree, Brenda. Brenda? Agree? agree? Yes. Perry? I'll go on. Oh, <laughs> she likes it. Coming out to Brenda of Mount Waverley in Victoria, a pair of limited edition sunnies courtesy of Aussie Opticals and Alan Treves. we got to disappear. Johnny. Thanks for having us again, Mitch. Thanks for being on the panel, mate. Love it. I'll See you again soon. Anytime. 9th of October. Brian Gardner, Pink Ribbon Ball. The Brian best. Gardner, Pink Ribbon Ball. 20 piece orchestra. 20 piece orchestra. Wow. What are you playing? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> the leading role. The leading role. All right, Barbara, we'll see you there. Great to have you here, Perry. Thanks for having me. It's Terrific been good to have you. We'll have you again. Councillor James, good luck with the Fashion Week. Thank in you the very city much. Of Perth. Great to have you as well. Thank you very much. You two Pleasure enjoy to it? be here. Oh, I loved it. Terrific. I'll we'll have you both back. We've got to disappear. Thank all our wonderful panellists, our terrific crew, and thanks for having us at home tonight, Australia. Good night. Bye bye. bye.